welcome to Freaky Fauna Friday, where every Friday we take a little time and explore some of the freaks of nature from around the planet we cherish so deeply. So please, jump aboard and let's explore the wilds together. Welcome back to Freaky Fauna Friday. Oh, yes, it's Friday again, ain't it? I am the great and peaceful mystery. And I'm Jay, and I'm going to pop my first fisherman's friend. (laughs) I don't know why I even try to whisper, because I level all this at the end, so it's all kind of like the same average volume. Well, it's just... But you can kind of tell with the inflection of our voices. It's the tone. It's the tone. It's calming, it's refreshing, and it's Friday. Uh... This freaky fauna is not calm, is scary to be around, and if, out of all of the animals in the world that you could be in a box with, this one, hippos and chimps, are probably the worst. Is it a Tasmanian tiger? A Tasmanian tiger? I don't know. You mean a Tasmanian devil? Same thing. No, very different. Very different demeanors. Oh. Yes, that's what I meant. Yes. Uh, no, it is the grizzly bear. Oh, yeah, I guess that would also be... Not a Kodiak. We're going to talk about that, too, kind of, that they are the same, but not the same. Okay. They're all subspecies and very different subspecies. Oh, phenotypes. Yeah. Okay. So they are, but they are very different subspecies. Uh, And they, you know, they range highly in diet, location, and what they're able to, like, how big they get. But grizzly bears. Ursus archeus horribilis. No. I swear. Horribilis? Mm Mm-hmm. Ursus Arctios, Arctios, Horribilis. Wow. Are a subspecies of brown bear, Ursus Arctios, from inland North America. They are famous for their extreme large size and their often aggressive nature, which we'll kind of talk about that. You know, they're definitely a mixed bag when it comes to being around. Okay. Uh, Habitat, the world. The entire world? Yeah, I think it's funny because I use like, I use a lot of like fun. Animal fact websites for this stuff, you know, to kind of get the basic. But they list forests, alpines, meadows, prairies, uh, desert, high mountains. Uh, all like they just keep listing pretty much every biome in North America, except Antarctica. No, they they live pretty much up to where polar bears start. Okay, well but that's Arctica. That's Arctic. Yeah, but I'm talking about North America. They're only in North America. Oh, okay. Grizzlies they, are only North American. But they can live in the yeah, whole they, world. Yeah, okay. they, they can handle the cold pretty pretty well. They do hibernate. Uh, that's one of the big differences between them and polar bears. Polar bears don't hibernate. They're always active. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. think about it. Their best time to hunt is the winter. Um, you know, North America, especially Alaska, Canada, these are more of the northern uh, brown bear species. Uh, they can live to be about 25 years old. Standing up, they can be anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half feet tall. It's pretty tall. Yeah, and it's... Uh, any other weight can be anywhere from 400 to almost 1,000 pounds. Okay. And Kodiaks are the bigger one. Bigger version? Yeah. The older brother? Yeah, Kodiaks are the yeah the larger one. Uh, color is mostly brown. They can have a blonde, and they can hybridize with other bears. Um, large mammals is a lot of their diet. Carrion, fish, berries, clams, etc. These guys are, uh, they love foraging. They eat a lot of vegetation just as well as eating a lot of meat. They're just as capable of killing a caribou or a small bison as they are foraging for berries. And eating frogs. And eating frogs. Uh, so th- these guys are kind of, you know, that's why they've done so well. As far as we look at the megafauna from the last ice age, you know, these are these are in those group. Mm. They are megafauna from the last ice age. Survivors, huh? Uh, and it's because they didn't specialize. Okay. You know, if you watch all the documentaries about grizzlies and stuff like that, they'll eat whatever. Jack of all trades, master of none. Or they can be out there cracking bones to get marrow Mm. or digging up clams. I literally just watched a video of them to get up butter clams in Alaska. And they'll dig these clams up from like three or four feet down. Butter clams? Mm -hmm. That sounds delicious. They look delicious. Mm. Uh, Want to guess what their main predator is? Uh, Other bear. It, this website lists none, but yeah, that would be it. Oh, okay. Uh, wolves can be kind of an issue for these guys. Uh, if there's like a bunch of them, I'm it's sure. It's almost always the bear's fault. Okay. Wolves will pretty much always avoid bear, big bear especially. You know, cubs are a little different, young bear are a little different, but right. big bear, an adult grizzly, there's not much that really goes out of its way to pick a fight. With a grizzly. But grizzlies will come pick a fight for other things' food. Okay. 
So that's where a lot of times when you see grizzlies kind of get in trouble with wolves. And as far as I've known, I've never heard of a documented pack of wolves actually killing a bear right then and there. Hunting a grizzly down and killing But it. fights, you know, can be fatal to both parties if they get nipped enough. Uh, once again, there's only one species of grizzly bear. It's a subspecies of an animal. Conservation status, they are threatened under U.S. law, but least concern according to the IUCN. So the, when we talk about red lists and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they're listed as least concern there, but they are threatened under U.S. law. Okay. And it's probably because most of their range, you know, a lot of their range does go into the, the continental U.S., uh, but most of it's Alaska, Canada. Protected habitat. Yeah. So as a global species, you know, several countries, they're, they're pretty, they're doing okay. Okay. But yeah. You ready to get into them? Yeah. What's the freaky stuff? Well, the, yeah, our apex predators, when you look at them, uh, we kind of get this delusion that bears aren't predators. These guys are fast. Do you want to guess how fast they could run? 28 miles per hour. A little faster. Oh, really? They can sustain a uh, burst of up to 30 miles per hour, uh, but duration's in the 20 mile per hour range. Whew. Oh, I've seen them take off in those little bursts. I know what you're talking about. Oh, they'll it's, get you. It's scary. And you see an, you know, a 700, 800 pound bear and you're like, Burst that fast. And, and you're you, like, that can't move. No, yeah, they can. They can move. All their hair, like, I don't know. It's 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 pretty scary. Like I said, these guys are hyper opportunistic. Okay. Uh, most time you see them, fly fishermen, you see these guys around bears a lot of times, like fishing the salmon runs. Mm-hmm. The only reason they're that close to those bears, and I know it's, they're risking it, is because there is so much food. Yeah. That the humans are the hardest thing to eat at that point. So that it won't. It usually won't bother. Yeah, it's not yeah. worth it. Yeah. It's all about caloric demand. I can catch these fish that are spawning that are super easy to catch right now, or I can deal with this human that I know probably has a gun or or whatever, you know, yeah. and they're in groups. They're not saying it doesn't happen because it does. Right. And most time it's, I'm going to blame the human in that interaction of accidentally probably getting too close. Being in the wrong spot. I just watched a guy that walked up on a bear, a big grizzly in Alaska. Walked up on it? He was on this little trail and he was talking, he was like videotaping and he's saying like, you know, these trails are really dangerous because there's a bunch of blind curves. Yeah. And you can walk up on these bears. And then like 10 minutes later, he rounds a blind curve. Is this the guy that does like the survival yes. videos? Okay. I didn't, I seen this. He was, you know, he was an accountant, right? That's He looked like he looks like one. Yeah, but he left it. Anyways, he was a cat fisherman forever. And then he started doing. Yeah. He wow. Started, that's pretty cool. I like him. He's cool. I don't know. His kids, you know, he takes his kids out there. And yeah. I don't know if that's maybe going with what he does. But anyways. Yeah. So he rounds the corner. But like 10 minutes ago, he's just talking, like, you got to be really careful with these corners because there'll just be a bear sitting in the trail. Yeah. And he's, uh, I seen he found the poop. And then he round the corner, and there's a bear, like, but it's back to him. Yeah. And he's like, starts walking the other way. Yeah. And then he starts singing, hey, bear. There's a like, uh, rock star, but singing, hey, bear. Yeah. Because uh, bears, you know, most times they'll just uh, avoid you. They eat carrion, though, which is already dead animals. Uh, salmon is a big part of their, their seasonal mm-hmm. diet. Berries and even clams. Uh, berries are really dangerous. You hear some of the native Alaskans talk about it and stuff like that. It's weird. They have more people go berry picking than they do have going hunting. Okay. Because berries often have lots of large grizzly bears around them. Okay. So you want numbers to go get that resource. Oh, to make you scary. less. So you're not the yeah, only one out there. Yeah. And it's kind of weird when you think about it. You know, oh, you're going hunting and stuff like that. Now, you're hunting, most of the time, you're hunting prey animals. Right. They're going to go away from you, except, you know, moose are really Probably moose the only and ones. buffalo and yeah. stuff like that. But caribou, you know, they're going to run. Run, you're right. They have extremely strong front legs adapted for both running very fast, catching and dragging prey, and foraging. These are, yeah. Uh, they're primarily solitary animals, except for mothers and cubs. However, it's been witnessed up to 100 individuals hunting salmon in the same area during the spawn. Okay. Like I said, they're just the same thing they have they view us. They do not like other bears. Right. Grizzlies are probably the only thing that kills other grizzlies. But when food's When it's plentiful, avail- if it's not a resource that they're scared of losing, everybody kind of calms down. It's like, uh, it's like going to the food court, you know? Yeah. No one's really fighting there as long as you got food. <laughs> All right. So I got some facts for you. Uh, they are some species of brown bears, my first one, which is kind of cool. Because there's brown bears are a northern hemisphere species. Okay. They're all over the northern hemisphere, whether it's you – know, they were native in Europe and Russia. They are still in Russia, you know, in the Americas. Uh, they are called grizzlies, both for their fur and their nature. Their hair is grizzled, which means – I don't know. Silver-tipped. Did not know that. Uh, however, it is believed that they originally got their name from their 
grizzly, meaning gruesome or scary behavior. That I can believe. But wait, grizzled means silver-tipped hair? Yes. Didn't know that. When you, you, You've you heard people that gets yeah. grizzled? Yeah. The original word for that is just means silver-tipped hair. Wow. We call it like salt and pepper now and stuff like that. Yeah. The scientific classification, Ursus Arceus Horbilis, also means horrible or horrifying reputation. Yeah. Uh, and this came from in the name. a naturalist in 1815 who watched these guys eating a moose alive. Jeez. They will eat you alive. Like the guy. Is that what got the guy that did that bear documentary? Yeah, where? Bear Man? Yeah. Yeah. It was a grizzly? Yeah, it was his female he's always talking about. That was his friend. And then she got hungry. Yeah. That's, they're bears. Yeah. They are apex predators. This means they are on the top of the food chain. Uh, apex predator is kind of a weird thing because if you look at great white sharks and orcas are both apex predators, uh-huh. but orcas eat great whites. So right. it kind of means that you are the apex of your environment, but it takes another apex to kind of knock you off. Mm-hmm. And for these guys, pretty much it's just other grizzly bears. Yeah. Um, like we already said, grizzly bears are hyper opportunistic eaters. They do not care what they eat. They'll just eat whatever. They will eat whatever. A fed bear is not – there's no such thing as a safe bear to be around, but a fed bear is much, much definitely a safer bear. Uh, they come together for hunting season, like we said. They are absolutely huge. Um, you'll have to look this up for me. I forgot to transfer. The biggest one we ever had reported was 10 feet tall and 680 kilograms. Okay, so 680 yeah. kilograms to Two pounds. pounds. It oh my gosh, fifteen hundred pounds. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty big. So, like I said, on average, you know they're like eight hundred pounds. Yeah, so double that. Yeah. So imagine seeing that. Uh, I I can't remember who it was. Just posted on the Facebook page a, a picture like this huge grizzly. Next yeah. to these people. Like imagine seeing that eight thousand years ago. You I knew mean, you were dead. Yeah. Like I, you walk around the corner and see a fifteen hundred pound bear, and just staring at you. Oh, yeah. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you could have a knife. You could have, you know, these instruments and tools. You couldn't stab it deep enough to, hurt even, to matter. Yeah, to even matter for it mauls you to death. So, yeah, these are huge animals. Uh, probably the second, there's, a, there's you know, these are the second largest land carnivores on the planet. Jeez, what's number one? Gri- or polar bears. Oh, polars, okay. A Kodiaks. So, I'm, I'm kind of lumping brown bears in that. In, the, in that group. Are Kodiaks in the brown bears? Yes. They're, yeah. they're a subspecies of brown bear. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so brown bears are the second, and then and then polars are the biggest. Uh, they have a distinctive hump on their back. So when you kind of look at them, they walk almost like a hyena. This hump is actually muscle attachment, which controls their forearms. They're highly maneuverable. Mm. These are, if you watch them work with their hands and arms, I call them hands or paws, uh, they are highly, they can be very gentle and dexterous to pull like little food sources out of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they can also just destroy oh, things. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've seen that part. Mm-hmm. Grizzly bear's claws are often longer than human fingers. Oh, that's frightening. Being just the claws. Four to seven inches long. Good Lord. They can run really fast. We already talked about. Uh, they hibernate for up to seven months a year. Huh. Uh, here's the scary thing. Well, they don't have to hibernate. So, you know, in, in uh, parts of California where they're still found, mm-hmm. uh, they don't hibernate really. At all? Yeah. Okay. Because it's, it's mostly warm enough. The Pacific rainforest pretty much keeps them fed and stuff like that. Mm. We'll have to be dealing with grizzly bears when we do the Trans Alps thing. Oh, that's just great. Yeah. Just great. Uh, but, yeah. And, you know, but the further north you go, the longer the hibernation period they, you know, do. Need, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's famous. Uh, some of the most horrible stories you've heard about grizzly bears, like we talked about it on the main show, and I think it was Japan where that bear killed several villages. It was oh a bear yeah, that woke up early and was injured. Yeah, when did we, what did we talk about that on? I, it may have been Patreon. I don't know. Uh, most grizzly bears give birth while hibernating. They wow. Yeah. So they cubs get, they give birth. The cubs nurse, and then mom wakes up, and the cubs are already a couple months old. Hey, that'd be nice. They don't become pregnant straight away. They're one of these animals that possess delayed impregnation. We've talked about with armadillos on the main show, where they have they have embryos, fertilized embryos that can be stored for a long period of time until the mother feels she's gained enough weight for hibernation. That's kind of freaky. And they can have different dads. So she, if she's producing three or four cubs, each egg uh, can have different. Oh wow! Okay. Different dads. Uh, they eat a lot of food before hibernating. 
like we, you know, they eat pretty much everything. They try to get really bulked up. Um, bears can gain up to 500 pounds before hibernation okay. and lose it all during oh, the winter. That's so much. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, Oprah. And that the very last thing they kind of eat is a plug for the end of their digestive system. Yeah. Which is a lot of like. Wouldn't they eat that first? No, it's kind of like the last thing. Because they don't want, because they're still pulling their fat, which is going to produce waste products. Yeah. So they don't want to. They don't want to fill their their den full of poo, right? But while they're eating all this extra food, they want to get that poo out. Oh, gotcha. But when they go into the den, they don't want to poop in their den. Gotcha. So the last okay, that's what they're full of. Yes. is that roughage. But then they're digesting. They're basically breaking back down their fat reserves, right? And that will produce waste, right? So they want to keep that inside until after. Uh, grizzly bears don't pee or poop during hibernation. That's crazy. Talk about holding it. Mama bears are, you know, that's, there's the reason they're called mama bears. They're some of the fiercest protective parents on the planet. Okay. The really only thing that ever gets a cub is a human or a, a male grizzly. Okay. They're pretty much the only two predators that these grizzly bear cubs have to watch out. Wolves can be kind of a problem, like we've already talked about. Dogs are smart enough, though. Canids are smart enough to know, you know, another apex predator. If you could kill it, it's worth it to kill. Yeah. Because it's a predator you don't have to deal with later. If you could. Yeah. So there's that chance of, you know, if cub gets too far away... Or that kind of transition period where they start kind of getting away from mom. When yeah. You know, a couple hundred pounds. There's not many things that's going to mess with a couple hundred pound bear. Right. Except a pack of wolves. Oh, nothing. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Uh, they will nurse their cubs for up to three years. And it's all dependent on each mom and how prolific she is. Uh, they kind of keep that set of cubs until the next set of cubs is coming. Okay. So definitely one or two years they're going to keep that cub, teach them how to forage, teach them when salmon runs and all this. That third year is kind of the iffy year because if she gets re-impregnated, she'll right. go into uterus. Then they're on their own. Then she'll kind of push them away. Right. And they still may live around her in her territory. There's been some evidence of that. There are pretty solitary animals, but there's some evidence that they'll still kind of let their last year's cubs still kind of hang around because mm-hmm. it's still that familiarity. But they need lots of space. Most uh, range over 1,500 square miles. Or sorry, 1,500 square kilometers, 600 square miles. Males have actual large territories, and females kind of roam through them. Okay. Uh, males will kill females in their territories. Oh, really? Yeah. They're kind of grizzly bears are rough to be around. They're unpredictable, huh? Yeah. And it really depends on if she's in uterus or getting ready to breed. Right. Or if she has cubs. He will purposely kill her cubs. So they're not in her. So she, then, then, she can, and then he can breed her. Wow. Uh, much more dangerous than sharks. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's the kind of a weird thing because you I just you know we have this look of bears where like you know Winnie the Pooh or whatever you know yeah and people on this coast have problems with dealing with black bears and then they are like okay all bears are like black bears for everybody to know unless a black bear here has a cub they're raccoons dang are they gonna hurt they're, you or like, go after you they're big raccoons unless she's got a cub yeah like I've watched black bears off and shoot them and stuff like you know they're they're not they're not too scary to people unless you're really messing with a baby. Uh, Grizzlies are not like that. Grizzlies will just... They're gonna, they'll are gonna they eat your guts yeah. while you're screaming. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Much more dangerous than human to kill many more people. Um, specifically problem bears, which are bears that have figured out that people carry treats. Ah, uh, okay. Because they have a highly developed olfactory, yep. highly developed tongue, and they can actually, like sharks, they can taste fat content and stuff like this, and they can get addicted to that kind of stuff like we can. Yep. So you get a bear addicted to junk food, and you're carrying around junk food. They will get that junk food. It's like yeah, it's like drugs. Uh, grizzlies are wolves' pretty much only competition. Mountain lions and, and wolves kind of don't overlap a lot of competition with the way mountain lions, big cats hunt. It makes sense. In the place where the two overlap, like Yellowstone, they often compete fiercely over food, and you will see bears and wolves just taking food and they won't even eat it, just so the other doesn't have yeah. it. And it's seen in other. Uh, apex predators when they kind of overlap mm-hmm. is that they'll kind of screw with each other on purpose. Yes. That's why they're apex. Mm-hmm. They are uh, a con- they're a conservation success story. So humans exper- expansion into grizzly bear habitat hugely led to their numbers being decimated. Uh, even something they were extinct. But then once they were de- declared protected under law, their numbers bounced back dramatically. That's good. But they were one of those animals that was on the verge of extinction. I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, and it's because we were so scared of them. So we were shooting them in um, mass? They, were, they had bounties on them. Yeah. Like mountain lions did, and jaguars, and, you know, some And part. buffalo. 
Well, Buffalo was different. Oh yeah, that's right. That was to, that was to get rid of the Native Americans. Right. Yeah. Well, these guys we got rid of them because they would come into your house. <laughs> Claw you imagine, your, mall you your family. It's, it's 1835. You have a wooden okay. shack on your homestead. Oh, okay. Wait. In, okay, with the wood wood stoves. Yeah. Burning. Yeah. It's a quiet night, and a 1,200 pound grizzly breaks in, bursts through your wall, and just starts eating you like the Kool Aid man. Starts eating your kid or something like that. And there's not a thing you can do. You got your. Uh, you're hitting it with a frying pan. No, you got your muzzle loader, and you're trying to. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't even. You have a better land beating it with a cast iron skillet. <laughs> yeah. And Ooh, a lodge might take it out. I did see a guy. Well, there was that guy that got his face sliced off by one. Do you ever see that video? <laughs> no, I don't want to either. And he's, and he's like, well, I just got attacked by a bear. And you could see his like ear and everything's like flapping. Oh, my gosh. And he doesn't know it. Oh, my gosh. Um, now, grizzlies are kind of scary. and then But they can be. Not kind of. Very. And it's, but it's all about being responsible and knowing how to be around them. If you watch a lot of the trailheads that actually do really, in my opinion, very good videos mm-hmm. around Big Bear, mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, bear, hey, bear, and they're not backing up, but they're not coming near the bear. They're letting the bear pick which path it's going to go down. Right. Most time, that bear don't want to mess with people, especially if you're not giving it any traits to come at you. Right. You're not having, you don't have food on you, or you're not acting like prey or acting like a competition. What was that one lady that was on a... Uh... Oh, I think she was on like the Alaskan bush people, mm-hmm. and she uh, there was a, she was in her area. She like taught people how, you can go up there and camp with her, but basically like uh, and she'll take care of you like at a it, it's somewhere in remote Alaska where you can go and camp like vac- for a vacation. And uh, she said there was this one bear that was kind of like she knew it was like kind of following around or scoping her out, but it had been for like a couple weeks. Finally, it attacked her. And like she had, she said she crawled like a couple miles. I do remember that. Back to camp, got her shotgun, went back out there and shot and killed the bear. What I cannot remember her name though, but that lady is the definition of like, I don't know, tough. I don't mm-hmm. know, like more manly than me. Oh yeah, Not in only a good way. Crawl back. Like yeah, I'm going to kill that bear. Crawl back. I got the gun and crawled back out there and killed it. You should have killed me, bear. Right. Exactly. Don't start something you can't finish. Ace Ventura, when he's beating up that crocodile. No, yeah, yeah. Don't start something you can't finish. Uh, no, but these guys are amazing creatures, though, in, in everything. Like, uh, they're in my mind, they're very similar to what I think a lot of like Transformers Rex, for example. Okay, an adult T Rex. Yeah, would have been a very similar niche to an adult grizzly bear. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Uh, it can be moved very quickly if they want to, but most of the time, you know, they can be carcass bullies, that kind of stuff, eating whatever they want. Because their olfactory senses and their tongues are hyper developed, uh, so those are animals that can kind of be a little pickier. But their digestive systems they'll eat they'll eat rotting meat if they need to. You know they don't. That's not a problem. And right. Just kind of bullying other predators. Like we talked about, I think Spinosaurus last week. It was Carcar Dontosaurus had bitten a chunk out of the Spinosaurus's fin. And you know, as far as we know, we never found that Carcar. But you just have these these certain group of animals that just kind of you don't want to mess with. No. But you can be around grizzlies and have perfect, you know, interactions. Right, yeah. If you know what to do, like, the scariest thing I think I've ever been around was, well, a black bear cub. Uh, me and Luke, my brother, had seen one behind us, like, on the trail. Fo- kind of, like, following you? No, or she just, this little tiny cub had walked out behind us. I'm like, uh-oh. Because uh, you don't want to be in between the cub and the mom. Yeah. So we're worried the mom's further up on the trail or something like that. And then she came out and got the cub and went back in. Like, yeah, hey, you old kid, get out of here. Then me and Emily, I told that story, but I'll share it real quick before we go. It's one of the longer freaky finals we've yeah, had in a is. while. Uh, in uh, Smoky Mountain National Park in the Loop in Cades Cove, uh, cars would park, and we never got to see a bear. Emily had never seen a bear, and it's like a weekend. and we're So the next time all the cars stop, we're like, okay, we're going to get out. We'll walk up and see the bear. Like, I don't care. Emily's really, yeah, I wanted to see a bear. We walk, 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 and the cars are parked for you know, like a mile. And then there's these two old ladies that are standing on the side of the road. And we're like, oh, you know, you guys, we're going to see the bear. And they're like, oh, no, he's right there. And 10 feet from these ladies. The bear. Like a 150, 200 pound bear. Yeah. And I'm like, do you think we should be this close? I mean, I'm there kind of backing up. Do you think we should be this close? They're like, oh, no, he's fine. Yeah. Like, no, he's fine. Yeah, he is fine. You're not. Yeah, exactly. You're walking at that bear 
with a giant camera. It's flashing and... I mean, we're maybe 12 feet from this. Me and Emily are already backing up, but, yeah. you know, walking backwards kind of deal. I don't want to take my eyes off it. Yeah. Uh, and, this, and he's a, he's a just kind of still hanging around mom kind of stage, but he's not this year's cub. Right. So he doesn't get a lot of mom's benefits, but he's still kind of following her around and stuff yeah, like that. but big enough to mull you. Oh, yeah. No, they don't yeah. have to be that big. Yeah. All right. I've been the great and peaceful mystery. And... I've been Jay, and I found that lady's name. It was Sue Aiken, if yes. anyone wants to look up her story. Yes, and then uh, today's words of wisdom I'll provide. Yes. Uh, be opportunistic, Ooh. like a grizzly bear. Oh. Survive everything. Like a grizzly bear. Like a grizzly bear. The only thing they're scared of is wolverines. And fear. They're not scared of fear. They are when they see me. I don't think so. I'm the embodiment of fear. I think you're fear. missing up a grizzly and a teddy. Well, either way, it's a bear. Like a koala. All right. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Freaky Fat on a Friday. If you want to help the podcast grow, remember to share and give it a five-star review.